Welcome to Hard Questions, where we tackle the tough issues and answer them right out of God's Word. I'm Don Black, your host, and our panelists today are on my right, Dr. William Glaze from Bethany Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Pastor Pete Ciccoloni from the Rainbow Temple in McKeesport, Pennsylvania, Pastor Chris Gibbs from Crossways Church in Valencia, and our, 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 our guest panelist, Derek Frank from Roaring Lion Productions, Productions <laughs> but pastor of, of a church for 30 years That's right. in the European theater. That's right. <laughs> so we're glad that you're with <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. And we're glad you're with us. We're, we're so glad. This is, this is a program where we go into the depth of the word from various perspectives. No questions off, off uh, limits, and we may not agree. So let's see how we go. Gentlemen, let's get right into our first question. A, an anonymous viewer writes into us and says, I have many friends whose adult children have walked away from the Lord. They were brought up in the church, raised in Christian school, but they've gone astray. But I have young children, they write. How can I ensure that my children will grow up to serve the Lord? That is a hard question. Well, well, you know, one thing that I would say, that there's no absolute guarantee for anything. So, you know, uh, you can do the best you can. But let me say something that I have experienced as a pastor that I've heard from young people. And that is the, the parents come to church and act one way in the church, and then they go home and act completely different. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if you really want to ensure your kids don't grow up to serve the Lord, you know, be a hypocrite. Oh. And, uh, you know, people that are, that are hypocrites, uh, the kids see that. And, and they see the parents, you know, maybe in church, raising their hand, praising God, you know, and all yeah, this right, other stuff. Right. And then they come home, they live like the devil. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that begins to eat away at a child's uh, faith and their commitment. And, and so I would say, you know, and I'm sure that everybody else, you know, is going to have another take on it. But I would say just first and foremost, you know, don't be a hypocrite. I agree with Doc. I, I really believe that there isn't any guarantee. But mm -hmm. I also believe get as much of the word into them as possible. I mean, the word the solid word into them because I really believe the word will never return void. We used to have family devotions and, and sometimes my kids who are now have children of their own, they talk about the family yeah. devotions. And, right. and uh, my biggest admonishment, get the word in them and let the word take root. And, and like you said, don't be a hypocrite. Right. Could I just make a sort of European perspective again? Sure. We don't have Christian school in Europe, and it's an extraordinary phenomenon, and, and I think there's an incredible upside to it. There's a downside that I see is that people can abdicate their responsibility to church and to yeah. school, yeah. and it gives a hazard of thinking we've done all the right things, and actually exactly what you're saying is what goes on in the home, which is the great right. influence. And one of the shocking things to me is not just seeing in homes, in, in Christian families, and, you know, the longer in ministry, I mean, exactly what you're talking about is the shocking, tragic, painful reality. I've seen kids grow up and some walk on with the Lord and others don't. It's, it's agonizing. It but but in, in the midst of all that, there's a challenge even to pastors, you know, because with yeah. pastors' kids, you think they'd get the best run, wouldn't you? It's not like that. And no. it just shows that yeah. even as a pastor, you say, I'm out there preaching, I'm leading church, I'm doing this. And meanwhile, as you rightly say, my model at home yeah. is church came first and kids came second. Mm. Right. And oh, the damage is that I've seen amongst, yeah. Yeah. you know, pastors as well. And this place of the, the parental responsibility, I just simply use the analogy, you know, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. That is, yeah. that is just a fact. But you can make it thirsty. Sure. And that's the challenge for every Christian parent is how yeah. do you make your kids really thirsty for what you've got, not in the upsides, but how you handle the downsides. Right. And that's what I think kids remember most of all. How do we handle the downsides before the Lord? Yeah, and you know what, speaking of that, Proverbs 22, 6, we know the verse, right? It says, uh, you know, right. train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, they won't depart from it. A lot of people have a misconception of what that verse means. Right. That how do I ensure, mm -hmm. listen, uh, anonymous whoever you might be, <laughs> you can't ensure mm -hmm. that they're always going to serve the Lord. But what you can, is that, that word where it says to train up a child is a word in the Hebrew that means to initiate, mm -hmm. to start it off, to get it moving in the right direction. And when they are old, they may turn from the path, mm -hmm. but that path is going to be gnawing at the inside of them. You're talking about, you know, what you do at home. I pastor a church. I pastor two churches, actually. I pastor a church, a Crossway Church. Uh, I pastor the Gibbs Church at 162 Brownsville. I'm going to get my address right on TV. Y'all come to my church at my house. 
At my house, we have family devotions. I don't make my kids read the Bible. I don't make them pray. Somebody said, well, how could that say that's hypocrisy? No, as a family, we go to church. As a family, we do devotions because I'm modeling for them so that they start picking it up themselves. They want to be like dad. They want to be like mm -hmm. mom because who dad is at church is the same guy that he is at mm -hmm. church. If I stick my foot in my mouth at church, I did it at home too. If I'm preaching the gospel at church, I'm doing it at home too. You know, going along with the word that both of you, you, you the, the scripture you use and the word that you were saying about train up a child, it actually means to get the, the palate of the child when a mother goes to nurse a baby, to get it into that sucking yeah. sensation. So in other words, what you both brought up, the importance of that in Proverbs is to have them, and I love what you said, to get a taste. Mm -hmm. Because once they taste of that word, yeah. mm -hmm. that taste will never go away. Sorry. I was going to say in Ephesians 6, 4, Paul says to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the, mm -hmm. of the Lord. It. That it. word nurture comes from a Greek word, uh, pedagogy, which actually was a, a paid trainer in homes. That they would bring somebody into the home and they would uh, almost be like a servant or pay them to train their child in a certain discipline, whether it was the arts or whether it was some type of skilled work. They would train them in that. And Paul says that as parents, yeah. that we are to, you know, be like that trainer. You know, we are to provide that environment where our kids are being trained in the things of the Lord. But I, I just add to that, to whoever sent in that question, um, and my heart goes out to them as it does to so many, mm -hmm. it's never actually over till it's over. There you go. And this is the thing that you can see, and we've seen this many times, and it's heart-wrenching when you see kids who have apparently had the opportunity and they just go off, but there is something that does sometimes happen downstream. If you stay long enough praying for them, you see some of them yep. come back, and it is never over till it's over, and you just keep praying for that it, child it, for it, as long as you can, and it is amazing if a foundation has gone in there that later on as life events happen and I'm thinking of a very particular girl that I that I've mm. seen grow up mm. right now who is so far from the Lord I'm still believing she's going to come right. back and she will be a powerhouse when she yes. does yes, yes, and yes. this is what I'm just thinking about now to anyone in that situation do not give up believing and do not give up praying and do not give up giving that good example to the person you're thinking of and, and you know the other thing too I, I remember recently my, my son has struggled and I love him dearly uh, some time ago I went to him and said, you know, if I've ever done anything wrong, I want you to be able to come to me if there's any scars there because of me. That's good. That's good. I, 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 I want to humble myself because you're more important to me than any other human being on earth. And I think that's important. Well, I, I'm going to take on the role of the father here because yeah. uh, I'm not perfect. No, here's perfect number two, not perfect two. <laughs> and so <laughs> with that imperfection yes. comes flaws. Mm. And true. when I go home or whether I'm out in public, sometimes those flaws are evident. Mm. And so those who are around me, my children and my wife most specifically, mm -hmm. see those things. Mm. And well, they have to understand that I'm not God, no. that I'm not perfect. Mm. And if they base their belief in God on me or on my wife, then their, their faith is placed in the wrong that's person. Right. That's so good. that's not where we want to ask their children to put up their faith. Now yeah. they're going to intrinsically look to us because we're their yes. parents. Mm -hmm. And they're going to model after us, mm -hmm. either good or bad. But that relationship with God is yeah. a different level. Oh, yes. No man comes to the Father unless he's drawn by the Spirit. Yeah. No man, yeah. nobody, no child. Yeah. You have to be drawn by God into that relationship with himself. and so. Just think back about your own lives, your own oh, testimonies. Yeah. You didn't, you weren't born and, and, and raised in a place where you were who you are today. Right. It took all your life to get to where you are now. Yeah. And it took all your life to get to where you are in, mm -hmm. in your faith. Mm -hmm. And you've had ups and you've had downs. Yeah. You've had times maybe that you quit. Right. And maybe times that you were really on a mountaintop and you had this yeah. experience that you were just uh, th thrilled about, spiritually speaking. But, but that's the ebb and flow. And I think your word is, the, is, is, is I think, the word that Never we need to hold on to. Don't give up. Never give yeah. up. Don't Never. say it's too late mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or they've gone too far. Some I'd like to just kind of throw in there with that is parents that have even felt that way, you know, the same grace that you expect Amen. to have because you're an imperfect dad, I'm an imperfect dad. I need to be as quick to extend that same grace 
to my mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't expect them to have a relationship with God that they're not seeing me have. I can't expect them to live a standard that I'm not showing them. I need to show them the standard of in the word. I also need to show them the standard of, you know what, son, daughter, I messed up. Forgive me. Mm -hmm. I need to extend that grace to them. You know what? They're having a bad day. Hey, listen, you had grace for me when I had a bad day. I asked for it. I need to give you that grace. That will help them not see the hypocrisy in Christian parenting. Let me share a, a quick, real quick story. One time we were on vacation and the church, it was exploding. Everything was going great. And, and we're in this beautiful, beautiful resort area and, and we're all having ice cream. And my youngest is going, yo, dad, hey, dad, yo, dad. And, and my mind was a million miles away. Mm -hmm. Finally, she yelled, Yo, Pastor Pete. Oh. <laughs> and as soon as she said Pastor, I said, Yes, sweetheart. <laughs> In order for her to get my attention, she had to yell Pastor. And well, I, I was so embarrassed. Well, I, I do know that many of us in ministry have put our priorities in the wrong places. Yeah. I, agree, I agree with that. And that's a lesson too hard to learn, and it should be a lesson you learn early. If you're a young man or woman in ministry, learn it from our testimony. Yeah. God is first, your children and family are second. The outreach that you're involved with is a third place. We are not, God doesn't want you to put your family behind the ministry. If you do that, there's going to be a high price to pay. Don't want to pay that price. Mm -hmm. It's not expected mm -mm. of you. Mm -mm. It's not your price to pay. Yeah. God has put you where you are. Let him establish you. You're not in charge. You're, you're not in charge. Hey, good, good first question. You guys ready for the second? Let's go. Oh, 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 oh. What we got? Come what we on. Got? Well, stay tuned because we're coming oh. back for our next hard question. We're going to go out in the street and we're going to ask, does God play an active role, active role in our lives today? We'll be right back. The answer is yes, I do. Um, I believe that, it, you know, in everything, he's universal, you know, and God, you have to look at everything that's around you to recognize, I mean, well, to easily recognize that he is the orchestrator of all things, you know, we think of intellect, you know, we think of birds, you know, nature, weather, you know, in every aspect of life and how everything is so finely connected and you know gravity alone you're not flying off the planet you know sun heat uh, it's just enough to warm you during the day in the winter it's just warm enough that you're not freezing totally uh, I'd have to say yes he is in everything and we should all recognize him and you know definitely give him the glory for that he's in everything absolutely in everything I think that brother had a a pretty good answer to that question. What, when pastors, you know, I've come out, I've come out of the uh, Southern Baptist world. Okay. And I worked with Charles Stanley for many years and uh, he's a strong uh, advocate of eternal security. And the, the, uh, the fact that we're saved and we can never lose that salvation. I'd like to ask you, you guys, what's your perspective on, on eternal security? I'm not looking at anyone in particular. My eyes are wandering to, to and fro across the land. Uh, who who may want to start this? I've been waiting for days for this. Okay, study. go for it. Go for it. In Ezekiel. Yep. All right, this, we're going to start off right there in Ezekiel chapter 33 and, and the great warning scriptures. Uh, it talks about warning the wicked man, but then also in Ezekiel chapter 33, 13, it says this. When I say to the righteous I will, that he shall surely live, but... He trusts in his own righteousness mm -hmm. and commits iniquity. None of his righteous works will be remembered, but because of iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Okay. So uh, I, I think there's, and then if we run with that Hebrews, and I'm going to give everyone else a chance, there's many, many portions of Scripture in Hebrews, many, Hebrews 3, Hebrews 6, Hebrews 10, Hebrews 12, that, and then the seven warnings to the churches. Not, not, we're not talking to sinners there. We're talking to the church people. Mm -hmm. I think there's two. Now, do I lose my salvation like I lose my car keys? No. <laughs> you, you Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so, but go ahead. I'm going I'm to give others. Right. So, no, what me, you're saying is, hold on, hold on. Like so, a car keys. Hold okay. on just a second. So, what you're saying is, in your perspective, you uh, can lose. Forfeit. Your, I'm going to use the word you, forfeit. You can forfeit your salvation. Now, 
Right, so, OK, maybe it's putting it rightly, but I would simply say, answer, can you lose your salvation? Answer, yes. Like, I can lose anything that has been given to me. If you want to use car keys, but I'd much rather use the picture of marriage. When two people get married, they make a covenant, which right. is till death as do right. part. Right. That is the covenant. But if one of those people wants to withdraw, the marriage dies. And all of us in pastoral ministry have had to deal with situations like that. Right. And it is never that God ever reneges on his side. He never, is never. ever there. I but agree. if we, and I, you've probably been around in pastoral ministry long enough to see people who I have seen renege on commitment. Yeah. And it is shocking to see what happens in their lives. And so this is, in my view, yes, you can. And that's, what, I mean, Jesus constantly says to you, and particularly John 15, you know, it's as we continue yeah. to abide in, in him. Now, I have been happily married for 33 years, but I cannot say I've got a marriage till death till one of us dies. It's <laughs> going to depend on us both doing what we've been doing the last 33 years, Daily. which I am believing we're going to keep doing, yeah. but it's not there till it's there. And that's the same in the Christian walk. And I would say respectfully to the gentleman you refer to, I actually totally disagree. It's so good to have you guys on this. <laughs> I'm coming over to my right side here for a, a little support on my, on my eternal security, I, I sense. All right, well, I, I believe this. Uh, you can fall down on board, but you can't fall overboard. So I think you can slip, you can fall, you can backslide, but I don't think you can lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. And I say that, I just came out of teaching a, a, a series at my church on eternal security. And one of the things that I did, I looked at, I went on the website, the, on the internet, I looked up every verse that people use to show that you can lose your salvation, mm -hmm. and every one of them was either misapplied or taken sure. out of context. Mm -hmm. sure. And so I, when I look at uh, John 10, that we are in the Father's hand, nobody can pluck us out. Romans 8, where it says nothing can separate us from the power of God. 1 Peter 3, that we are kept by the power of God under salvation. Hallelujah. And it's not our keeping. Now, somebody will say, well, you're giving a person a license to sin. Mm. And Paul said in Romans 6, what? Shall we continue right. in sin that right. grace may abide? Right. I have a problem with the person who would take the, the God's gracious offer of salvation and say that, well, because I'm eternally secure, I can do whatever I want to. No, you got a, there's a problem. There's a spiritual problem there. Either that person is not saved or they need to check their heart out with God. So here, here's the thing. I like your analogy. I can fall on board. I can't mm -hmm. fall overboard. My question is, who takes the choice of, from me to jump overboard? Because, see, if I get my eyes <laughs> off <laughs> of not, not. the captain, I get my eyes off of the destination, and I get my eyes on some what I think is an oasis somewhere out there, I'm going to say, I'm going to jump in that water because there's something calling me, and I've taken my voice off the captain. I put my voice over here, and I jump off over there. I have made a choice. I have gotten myself distracted, and I have now put all of my focus and attention on this. I, did, I may have fallen on board. I can't fall overboard, but I jumped overboard. What do we but, do? Can, do we, can I say hey, this real quick? Let's go. Let me just say this. Ding, ding, ding. First John 2.17. Yeah. Yeah. They started out with us, uh -huh. but they were never of us. That's why they went out All from right. us. What do we do so with Galatians? What I'm, what I'm saying is, is that they were never of us. <laughs> okay, anybody more, anybody, that, would, anybody would, yeah. would, that would willingly jump off the ship, right. I'm yeah. saying that they were okay. never of us. Galatians, Galatians but that, chapter 1, verse 6. Is your I interpretation. Marvel, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from whom who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Yeah. So Paul's writing people who were saved and says, you, you have left. Yeah. And then what do you do with Hebrews, which says there no longer remains repentance to those who have once known, tasted of. He's got the answer <laughs> right, right over here, brother. Uh, uh, yeah. What do you do? Because there no longer remains <laughs> repentance. I mean, I want to believe your way. Yeah. I really do. Well, and, and you know, I love you. Even, but the point is... Even that Hebrews passage, okay. it's not talking about people who were saved. It was yes, talking it about, is. No, it's not. It it's is. talking about Jewish people. The book of Hebrews is written to who? Hebrews. Wow. It's written to Jewish people. And to and, us. And they had tasted. They had heard about Christ. They had celebrated mm. the feast. They had done everything. And yeah. they had tasted the Holy Spirit, yeah. and they had just come that short could, of could salvation. I, could I just ask you a question? Okay, I hear the theological arguments, and I know both ways, but you've been in pastoral ministry, I assume, long enough to have watched what happens on people's spiritual journey. I do. And I know, 
and you will doubtless know the difference between the person who walks on with God and the person who apparently made a sincere commitment exactly. and you know what's happened. It is so painful to see what happens, yes. but there is no question that these people have walked away from God and they have removed themselves from their side of the covenant. Yeah. And well, for that reason, this is why I, in the range of interpretation, I understand what you mean, why I side strongly with the fact that you can withdraw from your side of the covenant. Well, let, let's talk about covenant for just a okay. second. When, when man originates a covenant, it's a contract. Man doesn't have the ability to make covenant. Only God can make a covenant. A covenant has a spiritual component to it. Yeah. So God's covenant to us are yea and amen and never will be broken. Never right. will be broken. So when I'm promised that I am sealed right. with right. the spirit right. of adoption. Amen. I'm sealed with the spirit and I'm promised that no one can Mm -hmm. pluck you out of my hand. Right. Uh, and I'm promised that, let's, let's go to the basis of this. What is salvation? What is salvation? Because I think we're talking about two different definitions of the word salvation. One is today. And much of the, the, of the warning about moving away from your faith is about living a victorious Christian life. Yeah. Amen. You cannot live a victorious Christian life outside of walking in the spirit. Now, if we're talking about eternal security, eternal life, the only qualification for eternal life is accepting Jesus. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God has raised you from the dead, you shall be saved. Nothing else. That's it. Period. Amen. End, Amen. Of, end of sentence. Sorry. Can, I, can I just in interrupt one something so just rude? In one second. <laughs> and after you've done that, your qualification, because it's the easiest thing to do is to receive Jesus. Easiest. Then after that, we have to walk in discipleship. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're saved, what actually happens is, I'm going to go fast, is the Holy Spirit, it takes up residence Amen. inside of you. Amen. Yeah. You don't get his fingernail. No, and then my, my question back to you guys is who believe you can lose him, that he'll leave you then. Practically speaking, he came in when you were saved, mm -hmm. right? Literally right, came in. Right. What makes him leave? Well, what kind of sin does it maybe take? He did, did God, maybe maybe God he divorce maybe Israel? Left. What kind of sin did does it God take? God divorce Israel. I don't think God does. Oh, oh, yeah. Don't, 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 don't lose the point. Don't lose the point of the Spirit he now. Right hold, on, said, I, hold on. He what, said, what, I'll give you, you if your you have, bill of if divorce. If you have the Holy Spirit living and in you, will the Holy Spirit chosen, tell you to walk away from God? Yeah. Okay. Will what, the Holy what, what, Spirit tell you to walk away from God? No. No, 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 no. That's saying if you're always listening. Then you were never saved then. What I'm saying, you were never saved. I can't say that. If you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you to walk away. I'd love to say that I've listened to the Holy Spirit 100% in my whole life, but there are times that that I have it, but even with that, I thank God for His grace that I that, that I came back. And this is the point: is we can we, we can have debate and argue. Right, right. Can you lose it? But I want to say, go back to what you were saying. And having a real life is how close to Jesus can I get? Because if I stay with Jesus, I don't have to worry about losing, walking away, kind of get plucked oh, I out, kind of walk I out. Right. How first about of, I just get close all, and hold on to? I think your argument is pastorally very very dangerous. If I can be so well, disrespectful and, and to you. Yeah, and Secondly, that. Scripture speaks about salvation in three tenses. We have been saved, we, we are, are being right. saved, and we will be saved. Right. Oh, and thought, I am not disputing oh, oh, where it thought. starts. We've got we to take a break. We'll come back. <laughs> while, we're, while we're away, guys, I want you to think about this. What action can I take? What mm. sin Amen. does it take there you go. for me to lose the Holy Spirit? We'll be right back. I told you that we don't always agree, and that's what's good about the program. We don't always agree. In fact, we don't agree on this so little that we're going to extend this program into a part two. First time in uh, Hard Question history that we're going to go to a part two. So what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this segment up, and then we're going to come next week mm -hmm. with part two of this eternal security conundrum. <laughs> of what that is. Well, it's an important issue, guys. It is. Yeah. It is. And I'm not going to ask you to, I'm not going to give you time this minute because we've only got a minute right. to tell me what that sin is that would right. separate right. me from the love of God in Christ right. Jesus. But, but we'll come back and we'll talk about that in our, in our next program. That's what Hard Questions is all about. I like to end every program with a scripture. So mm -hmm. let's do that in this case. And uh, as, as we, all we do, and this is out of Ecclesiastes, which says to everything there's a season. A time for every good purpose under heaven. That's from the Ecclesiastes. There's a place and a time for everything. We, we put our trust in God. Mm -hmm. He's our source. He's our hope. He's our father, our daddy, 
Abba, our daddy. Don't, don't let the questions throw you off track no. that the bottom line is God loves you with an eternal, everlasting love. You can't disappoint him because he knows already what you're going to do. So that takes all the pressure off. We hope you've enjoyed today's program. I know you have. Uh, if you have a question and you want to send us a hard question, feel free to do that at hardquestions at ctvn.org. Uh, this is the kind of program that we want this to be, where it makes you think. It makes you go to the Word. See, if we're successful, you're going to go to the Word and we're going to find out what you believe. You've got to be ready to give a defense yes, sir. for what you believe in. Don't take other men's or women's word on it. Amen. Find out what the word says about it, and your life will never be the same. Thank you for watching. We love you. God bless you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.